great video for you to watch. Um, we are in private wells. There's so much confusion on them, whether you live here in Chicagoland or you live anywhere else in the country. We get a lot of people from Texas, California, Florida who dial in. Florida, the water's really, really tricky down there. Uh, but Barrington and Chicago area, the suburbs of Chicago, it's very tricky. So it's nine o'clock. Welcome. Today is well water, bacteria in well water. And I'm Andrew Wilson. Uh, you are tuned into the Angel Water website or uh, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all that kind of great stuff. So we're broadcasting live. And what we're talking about today is well water. In the Chicagoland area, a lot of our clients are actually on private wells. Also, uh, as we are migrating to do a lot of work in Florida, uh, there's a lot of private wells in, in Florida as well. So we're going to talk about one of the most common contaminants in well water, and that's bacterias. Um, bacterias are very, very, very concerning to human health, and that is why the Department of Public Health in Illinois uh, strongly recommends that you test your water on a regular basis. By the way, uh, Angel Water is a licensed uh, plumbing company and we're licensed by the Illinois Department of Public Health. We're also uh, certified through the EPA so that we are uh, lead certified. So we really understand a great deal about water. Now, um, Angel's background is we've been de dealing with well water for 45 years in the Chicagoland area. Uh, my background is in sciences. I was uh, own mail order pharmacies, and and uh, so I understand very much about human health. So when I came to work at Angel Water, it became a natural for me to actually look to see how I can impact all of you. How can I impact people on a regular basis? How can I make them more healthy? And so the number one thing when you're on a private call is I want to educate you on how you can protect your family, protect yourself, how you can make sure that you are uh, being as healthy as possible. So the number one thing that we're talking about today on private wells is that you have to be the water authority for your family. It is important that you are the water authority of your family. The EPA and your state says that no matter what state you are in the country, they're hands off. There is nobody that's gonna come to your door and knock to ask you, hey, have you tested your water today? And that's why the EPA has done a great job on giving us education that we'd like to share with you. I'll highlight that in a few seconds. So first and foremost, I wanna talk about what kind of bacteria is get in well water. So the number one bacteria that gets in the well water is coliform bacteria. Coliform bacteria is a basic bacteria that can enter the aquifer from either bugs with usually um, different bugs that try to find a home inside the top of the well cap here. If you notice here, here's grass, and this is a vent. So all well caps, almost, almost all well caps, have vents to them. And so if there's a vent uh, to them, sometimes that vent is broken and bugs crawl in, and they die and they fall into the aquifer. Sometimes there's other things that can contaminate the private well. That would be, uh, for instance, something, you know, some bacteria or something come across uh, maybe animal waste. We've seen horse farms, dogs, their human, their animal waste getting alongside this well cap and they travel down and get into the aquifer and that multiplies. So yeah, that's rather gross. We've seen off to the side here sometimes rivers or lakes where the geese, their waste gets into the lake and that lake is over here and that actually flows into your aquifer. So there are multiple ways that bacteria can enter this aquifer. Sometimes it's even a drill bit from the well driller who originally drilled the well and it's been sitting dormant because down here, remember this is, this is a pocket of water and maybe they drilled a neighbor's house and that aquifer water is moving down to you and it's taken two years and now you have coliform bacteria. So that uh, coliform bacteria, which is the number one contaminant, there's about 10 to 20 percent. It depends on who, what articles I've read, but 10 to 20 percent of private wells get coliform bacteria. Got to stress that with you guys. 10 to 20 percent of private wells get coliform bacteria. This is just crazy. And this is how it can actually get in there. Some states they actually have a concrete pad here and they might do a little bit better job protecting the aquifer 
but it's important that you understand that you want to protect this by 20 feet on each side. So that means don't fertilize by the well cap. Don't let your animals defecate by that well cap. Protect your septic system because if this is on one side of the house and this is the home and your septic usually is on the other side, you don't want that cross contamination. So always have your septic system checked once a year. We don't want to have some crack in the earth that cross contaminates that septic field or that septic field overflows and there's somehow it gets into your private well. So you have to be vigilant. Your job is the water authority of your family, is the septic authority for your family. So you need to be vigilant on taking a look at what is it that you can do on a regular basis because again, no one's gonna knock on your door. With coliform bacteria being the most prevalent uh, concerning bacteria, that's the one that can make your family healthy or not healthy. That is something that I'm really stressing with each and every one of you that you test for on a regular basis. In our state, the Illinois uh, Department of Public Health suggests that you do it every season. That's four times a year. And that's because this aquifer can move up and down with the barometric pressure or the moon's pull on the earth. So as it rises, it might touch some other things. And as it lowers, it might touch some other things. Um, you need to know how deep is your well. The more shallow your well, let's say that this is 50 feet, we have a community called Port Barrington. They have wells that are only 50 feet, but their aquifer is really like two people's water is like five feet from the grass. So that means that if a dog or some bacteria got along this shaft, it can easily get into their drinking water and here they are immediately getting sick and they really don't know why. A lot of times at hospitals, we found that customers don't even know. They go to, to the hospital and they're like, oh, maybe you ate something that was poisonous. Maybe you got bad food poisoning. And then they go back and they get it over and over again and they can't seem to figure it out until a doctor finally says, well, maybe it's your water. So we've witnessed, doc, over the years that we've been in business, we've witnessed that doctors are not asking people right off the bat, do you own a private well? This is why this is so important for each of you to listen closely. And so you're aware of some of the concerns or some of the things that can happen to you if you are getting that. Now, if you have infants or elderly, oh my God, it's way more important. If your uh, health, if your health itself is depressed because you're maybe going through chemotherapy or some other, some sort of uh, heavy uh, treatment for some illness, you have to remember you should be vigilant on testing your water because coliform or E. coli can make you very sick and dehydrated, it can cause diarrhea, and you can really, really, really get sick from that. And we wouldn't want you to uh, 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 be concerned or get yourself, uh, we don't want you to be hurt. So in any regards, test your water, four times a year for coliform bacteria. Now, I hope that's very clear on E. coli and coliform bacteria. Usually coliform bacteria can lead to E. coli. And that's why we wanna know which one of these, or you wanna know as you're the water authority for your family, do I have that? And again, test four times a year to see whether or not you do. Again, you understand how it can get into your aquifer. It's very concerning. Now, there are two more kind of bacteria. They're very prevalent in the Chicagoland area. That's called sulfur bacteria and iron bacteria. Now, these are naturally occurring bacteria. By the way, I'd like to use this water droplet as an example. Bacteria basically coats the water molecule. And so if it's coliform bacteria, it's attached to the water molecule and it's sort of leached onto it and sort of feeding on it. This is why it continues to grow. Um, if you have iron bacteria or sulfur bacteria, again, it coats the water molecule like this. So what we wanna do is we wanna understand, do you have it? In the Chicagoland area, we find that about seven or eight out of 10 wells, that's 70 to 80% of wells have iron bacteria or sulfur bacteria. I'm gonna show you the tests that we perform. These are made by a company called BART, uh, I believe. And so they're called the BART test. And we test on a regular basis for so many of our clients to see whether or not they have it. Some of the com complaints that they say state to us on iron bacteria or sulfur bacteria is the water smells like rotten eggs. Now you need to understand that because 
if your water smells like rotten eggs, if you just Google rotten egg smelling, the number one thing that comes up is sulfur in water. But that doesn't mean you have sulfur. In the Chicagoland area, it could mean that you have iron bacteria because iron bacteria is very prevalent here, but nationwide, it's not that prevalent. So all the Google searches will show you uh, hydrogen sulfide as being an issue or sulfur sulfur is the issue. So when you have iron bacteria, I'm going to first talk about the health stages. So from a health stage, you start to feel like you got a sour stomach and diarrhea. If you have coliform, it's a little bit more violent than that. Sometimes you'll even throw up. But sour stomach and you might get a little diarrhea, you might feel a little bloating on iron bacteria. Same thing with sulfur bacteria. You just feel a little discomfort. Now, it's important for you to understand that because you certainly want to be able to notice that. Now, we've had so many of our clients tell us, wow, you know, I've been drinking my water for five, 10 years. My relatives came in for a party. Everyone got sick except for me. And they all had, they were all complaining about diarrhea and sour stomachs and bloating. And I didn't have it. It's very interesting. What we found is sulfur bacteria and iron bacteria, your body gets used to it. It's not harmful to the human body. In fact, we have a document from the, uh, that you can find on our website or contact us. This is actually called iron and drinking water. And in it, it actually defines from the Department of Public Health that it causes sour stomach and diarrhea. And what we've been able to determine by talking with so many of our clients that, wow, their body gets used to the iron bacteria. Sort of like in Mexico, Mexicans get used to the bacteria in their water. We get down there and we'll drink it. And all of a sudden we have what's called Montezuma's Revenge. Very similar with the iron bacteria or sulfur bacteria in Chicago. The first time people move in, they all of a sudden to a new home, they go, they don't feel all that great. They don't think much about it. Then their bodies get used to it. In fact, I grew up on a private well in Barrington that had iron bacteria and I always had it. It didn't really cause me anything, but certainly when relatives came to visit, I can remember, remember them saying, complaining about the same thing. Now, uh, it's important for you to understand again, that it's not concerning. It is not, it's called an aesthetic issue. That the state of Illinois Department of Health does not say that that's a concern. They do say that coliform is a concern. By the way, when you look at coliform and if you smell the water, sometimes it smells a little musty. Whereas sulfur bacteria and iron bacteria smells like rotten eggs. You can define these. There's a couple good tools to take a look at just as a visual indicator. It's not perfection. It's just a visual indicator that we've witnessed out of seeing thousands of homes. If you go to the toilet, take the lid off the back of the toilet. We're not talking about the bowl. We're taking the lid where the water reservoir is. If you take that off and you look in that toilet, if you see in that water bowl, in that reservoir, like bubbles, little bubbles in there, coliform bacteria, almost always we've tested positive for coliform bacteria. Again, I'm clear that the state of Illinois and the EPA are very clear, you must do a test. This is only a visual indicator. Now, that's sort of like, it might even be a little milky. I've looked in the homes and it looks like a gallon of milk or not quite that white, but it looks like a kid blew bubbles in there. And so there's multiple bubbles, big bubbles sometimes. And again, every time I've seen it, it's been positive for coliform bacteria. We've also had cases where it looks clear, still people are sick, we test the water, coliform bacteria. So you can't say that for sure, it, if you have it, you've got it, nor can you say if you don't have it, you don't have it. So, so you need to do a regular test four times a year according to the Department of Public Health. Now, when it comes to iron bacteria, if you were to flush the toilet and the water falls down, you can wipe the wall and you see an orange slime that's called iron bacteria. And it's like you could almost write your name on the wall of the toilet, iron bacteria. If it's brown in color or gray or black in color, that's most likely sulfur bacteria. Again, a natural bacteria feeds on an organic in the water. Sulfur which is gonna be the bacteria is feeding on sulfur. If it's iron, the bacteria is feeding on iron. Again, what happens is the iron molecule is actually attached to the water droplet, the bacteria is feeding on it. So it's important that you understand that that's what is happening with your water. It's natural, again, it's not harmful to your health. Now, 
uh, I want to be able to make sure that you understand what to do. Now, this is a great document that each of you should try to find. If you live on a private well, this is a document published by the EPA, and it's called Drinking Water from Household Wells. You can Google it. You can find it on our website. Uh, you can call us at 847-382-7800. Uh, we'll email one to you. This is document talks on page five, six, and seven. It talks about how you should be testing your water on a regular basis, not just for these bacteria, but to do a variety of tests. We want to know, for instance, if pesticides and herbicides were sprayed on the ground and you're trying to keep your grass green, did that leach into your aquifer? This document says that you are the water authority of your family and you should be testing for it on a regular basis. In addition, it talks about the bacteria that you should be testing for. So it's very important that I want to make sure it's very clear to each and every one of you that you are uh, testing for your bat water on a very regular basis. Now, the EPA test, which has a variety of things, pesticides, herbicides, you know, uh, it's what every city has to go through. So there's going to be other uh, chemical products, maybe uh, byproducts from having uh, gas stations in there and all that. Um, some of those things are you need to test for. And so it's very important that you understand that every year or so, you want to do a full throttle test or about every two years, you want to see, is there anything? Maybe there's a neighbor that's a farm field and the fertilizers have gotten into the aquifer. Maybe you have a neighbor that's a gas station and the gas has gotten into the aquifer. I mean, we have seen some crazy things here. Heck, in the Chicagoland area, we can, in one area, we can light the water on fire. Now that's methane in the water. Now there's always, with every single methane case, we have coliform. So these are some of the examples I want you to understand and hear and go, wow, if I've got that, I should know about it. In fact, we even had a client who had a second house down in Tennessee and they were doing fracking and it was so crazy. The man was, would live here in Barrington Hills and he'd go to vacation, he'd get sick. He'd come back, he'd feel better. He'd go there, he'd feel sick. He calls me up one day and he's like, hey, um, do you think that possibly it could be my water? And I said, yes, have you watched uh, Gasland? This is an important movie for you to watch. He's like, no, I haven't. I go, I understand they've been doing some fracking down in your uh, community or down in your state. You need to see if that's happening. And he goes, oh my God, I'll look into it. He gets down there and he sees the fracking that's been going on and that's these flames are coming out of this big pipe that's not in his neighborhood. So he gets a water test from us. We send it out and he's positive for some very scary contaminants. So he learned that his own water at his second home is absolutely toxic and he shouldn't be drinking it. So I want to stress that although it's not, a, you know, I want to stress how important water testing is. It actually hits home here in Chicago. Up in Wakanda, where I used to live, this is part of why I'm so passionate about water. I grew up, or I had a home on Wells Drive. Garland is a street that's uh, along us, and it goes, it ends at Bonner Road. And on the corner of Bonner and Garland, there is a Superfund site. And their vinyl chloride was detected years ago, but the EPA thought that it wasn't gonna get into the aquifers that are south of that uh, Superfund site. So. When I first moved in there, the prior owner of this business demanded that I get an RO. And he's like, you just got to get one. You got a young family. It's important. Get an RO. So I bought an RO from him and I just, I really didn't want to because I didn't want to spend the money on it. But I'm so glad he talked me into it because years later, vinyl chloride was found to have, it actually had killed one, two of our neighbors and it had poisoned the aquifers in our area. And so that became a driving cause for me to become the best water treatment company that we can possibly be for you. The best education source that I can be, that this company can be for you because their neighbors got sick, there the vinyl chloride got into the water and the EPA, when they came out and did a full meeting at, the, you know, at a big uh, auditorium, they basically said, I'm sorry, back in the 60s, our, our scientists were wrong. We thought that it wasn't gonna go south and it did. And people were furious. They're like, well, don't, you should pay us or you should do something. They said, well, it's an aquifer and it's your responsibility to test for it. So again, if you can pass this, uh, this video on to anyone else that has a private well, I urge you to do that because bacteria are one of the most important things. Testing your water is a 
is one of the most important things and you need to be able to do that on a regular basis. Now, um, what I wanna be able to do is talk about uh, how to treat for bacteria because we're now at the point of needing to understand what are the treatment methods that you can do should you test positive for it. And if you do test positive for it, the number one thing that the state says or the Department of Health and the EPA, shock chlorinate your well. That's where you take this well cap off, you pour chlorine down, and you basically bring a little bit of water through the pressure tank and you run an outside silcock, not the indoor faucets, because there's gonna be heavy amounts of chlorine that could actually make your family sick. And once you know that that chlorine is going through your system, your pressure system, then you turn it off and let it sit overnight or 24 hours. That allows the chlorine to kill the bacteria in this aquifer. And then you run the water to an outside, somewhere on your grass, and you purge the chlorine out the following morning. Now, that kind of process is actually a little complicated. Here is a document that actually walks you through how to do it because there's dosing issues. What we found in coliform cases is that it will go away for three, six months, and it comes back often. By the way, in our community, when we look at the Fox River Valley area, people who live along the Fox River, they test at a much higher level for coliform than people that more than 20%. We found about four or five out of uh, 10 wells actually have coliform along a Fox River. We find that also about around some lakes that have a lot of geese waste. So be very careful, be vigilant on that. That chlorinate in that well will get rid of it for a short time. Sometimes it does get rid of it for good, but we, we're really, uh, that's really up to you to be able to decide. The second way that, uh, company that the state of Illinois, for instance, in this document talks about uh, getting rid of it is called constant chlorination. Constant chlorination means basically we would do the same, as a water treatment company, we would do the same thing that uh, a city does. The water is drawn out of the aquifer and in cities they put it in a water tower and they add chlorine there and then they send that off to your home. In the basement of a private home or what, someone with a private well, we have a contact reservoir that we can inject chlorine. It mixes it. Then we run it through a carbon filter to dechlorinate it. So that's one of the things that you can do. Uh, I see that we have a, a video or a request on here asking whether or not ultraviolet lights. Yes, we ultraviolet light, not in Illinois, but in other parts of the country, it's allowable. But we'll get to that in a second. So constant chlorination does mimics that, but there's a couple key things. We need to have the right contact time and we need to also dechlorinate it to make sure that it goes away. Now, addressing the question that we have on YouTube, uh, yes, there is ultraviolet light as a treatment option. The reason why Illinois doesn't, uh, I'm assuming this by the way, I assume the reason why Illinois does not allow ultraviolet light is because in our state we have a high level of iron. And so iron in an iron bacteria case, or excuse me, with a ultraviolet light case, we have a cylinder that sort of looks like this. And inside the cylinder is a ultraviolet light bulb. And what happens is the water passes around that bulb and the ultraviolet light kills bacteria. However, the, the bulb itself gets coated with iron in the Chicago land area, preventing the, bacteria, preventing the light pen to penetrate into the water to kill the iron bacteria. So it's not something that we, that the state of Illinois recommends. Also, I would strongly urge you if you are using that in another state where it is, a, it is allowable to actually first test your water and make sure that you're not gonna have a quartz sleeve that gets coated. We've had some clients that bought uh, because they didn't want to do anything with chlorine, which I understand. But we had uh, a gentleman who bought a really big one that had a self-cleaning device that cleaned the, the glass sleeve that the bulb was in that still didn't work. So it tested positive again for coliform bacteria because the iron kept coating it. So I urge you to really do your homework on that. Consistent chlorination seems to be the end all be all. Every client of ours, in fact, we even have a couple businesses that have this because they were shut down because of coliform in it and without a chlorine injection system, they weren't able to be open. So again, you can find documents online from your state 
to learn how to chlorinate your well and how to actually mix the right amount of chlorine to dose into your aquifer, you might contact one of your well companies. Locally here, Peter Snelton and Sons, they're great guys. They might be able to help you do that as well. They will come out and chlorinate your well. If you'd like to have something more automated, then certainly you can do a chlorine injection system. That's where our expertise is at. Reach out to us. If you don't live, you live in Florida, Texas, California, we've had people from all over the country. If you have any questions, give us a call. We might be able to help give you some guidance on how to do that. Our number here at Angel Water is 847-382-7800. Again, my name is Andrew and we're with Angel Water. Now, if you like this video, please, we ask you to please subscribe and click like. If you subscribe and click like, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, please click like, share this. Share these videos with anyone with a private well because again, 20% of wells, 10 to 20% of wells have coliform bacteria in it that leads to E. coli and can make someone in that house violently sick. So please share this video if you know anyone with a well. If you have any further questions, you can also reach us on angelwater.com or you can reach out to us again at 847-382-7800. And again, I'm